That day, my bestie Anne and I were creeping in the corridors of Solomon School. Anne, why are we at our rival school at this hour? Don't ask anything, just follow me. Then she suddenly stopped in front of the trophy display cabinet of their girls' soccer team. Without a moment's hesitation, she took out a hammer and smashed it. Holy cow! Are you crazy? <laughs> This is fun! Suddenly, a large guard spotted us and hurriedly threw the trophy at me and beckoned me to run. What the hell? I panically hugged the trophy and ran for my life after my crazy bestie. Hi, I'm Luna, 16 years old, and that's Anne. She just moved here from New York. As you can see, Anne is bold and reckless. She always came up with crazy pranks and dragged clueless people into it, including me. My life used to be quite peaceful. I loved playing soccer, but for many years, the girls' soccer team hadn't had any particular achievements. It was already difficult enough for us to find 12 people to maintain the team. The principal really wanted to disband us, but he couldn't find a reason. But one day, he finally found it. It was when he suddenly informed me and Lincoln, the science club's president, that he would cut the investment of both teams because the school's funding was running out. Lincoln was fuming. Why don't you disband the girls' soccer team instead? Their pathetic losing streak has ruined the school's reputation. It's probably even worse than Marilyn Monroe's dress after being ruined by Kim Kardashian. And you are acting like Kanye West, jerk. Are you gonna put our names on your blacklist? We shouted at each other, but in the end, the principal seemed to agree with Lincoln. Even though I tried to convince him, he didn't change his mind. I was so depressed when I had to announce that bad news to my teammates. They were all heavily disheartened. After everyone had gone home, Anne suddenly spoke to me. There must be a way. Please, Anne, don't cause any more trouble than we already have. Luna, are you willing to go down without a fight? After convincing me, she quickly devised a plan. The night right before Lincoln's club was about to enter a science competition, Anne and I sneaked into the school. We sabotaged their entry and staged it as an accident. When we were ready to leave, Anne suddenly made a detour to the principal's room. She wanted to take revenge on him too. Despite my objections, she casually let a skunk into his office. Only when we saw the shadow of a security guard appear did she agree to leave. The next morning, my school became absolutely chaotic and filled with screams. The first scream came from our principal when he had a skunk fart on him. Next was the science club when they discovered that their entry product was destroyed. As a result, they were unable to participate in their competition. That also meant the school fund went right into the soccer team's pocket for us to attend the upcoming tournament. Still, although my team was saved and everyone blamed the skunk for all those unfortunate events, I knew what I did was wrong. But anyway, it was a rare opportunity for me and the team, so we trained extra hard for the tournament. Our first round opponent was Solomon High, the defending champion of last year's tournament. On the first day we met, Mina, their captain, had already shown us disdain. What is the name of your team again? Oh, sorry. It's just you are eliminated from the first round every year, so I can't remember it. <laughs> Losers. After saying that, they laughed maniacally and kicked our equipment box. And that's exactly why Anne devised her trophy stealing plan. After that day, my bestie and I had a big argument. I disagreed with her approach, and she criticized me for being naive. Before leaving, I angrily told her, Stop your stupid pranks, Anne! We'll beat them on the field, not behind their backs! Fine, if that's what you want. Thank God, after that, Anne didn't do anything else. Apparently, she understood that I meant business. A few days later, our first match finally started. The Solomon led us 2-0 at the beginning, forcing us to rediscuss our tactics, but my teammates were all dispirited. Sheesh! Are they Huck? I can't even keep pace with them. Calm down, girls. Everything will be fine. Trust me. Fortunately, my optimism and the new tactics had paid off. In the second half, the game was more balanced and we controlled the ball most of the time. After 30 minutes, we scored two goals. However, there was a strange thing. 
I noticed that their team's physical strength was abnormally weakened. They quickly got exhausted and couldn't keep up with us. After the game ended at a tie, I learned the surprising news that the Solomon team had food poisoning. They even had to postpone their next match to recover. Immediately, I thought of Anne. I surreptitiously checked her back in the dressing room and found a strange medicine bottle. Suddenly, Anne appeared. Anne, be truthful to me. You're playing dirty, aren't you? You told me to beat them on the field. Duh. Don't twist my words. Come on, Luna. They deserve it. No one deserves this. I'll tell the truth to the organizers. Oh, are you going to betray me? If you do, you'll pay for it. Sure enough, my bestie kept her words. One day, when I was in the changing room, the principal, a member of the organizing committee, and a policeman suddenly appeared. They said that someone accused me of poisoning the opposing team. After checking my locker, I froze when they found the Solomon Trophy and a medicine bottle there. Even if I grew 10 mouths, none could have justified my innocence. With the evidence so clear, no matter how I explained it, no one listened. The results of the last match were also deleted, and I was punished to stay on the bench for the rest of the tournament. In addition, I had to go to the Solomon High to return their trophy and apologize to them. In a blink, I became a criminal in everyone's eyes. All this should have been for Anne. Not long after the tournament's second round took place, I became a substitute, and Anne replaced me as the captain. She looked at me with triumphant eyes. If you had listened to me, you wouldn't have been in this situation. Then she coolly left. After the first half of the match was almost over, Anne and the opposing player suddenly had a collision near the penalty area. My ex-bestie flipped in the air and fell to the ground. It looked really painful, but all the team members were strangely calm. One said, Anne is probably pretending to get a penalty. Really? Yeah, she told us we couldn't win by using our tactics. We could only win if we used special tricks. <laughs> Typical Anne. I rolled my eyes while bringing the first aid box to her and said coldly, Wake up, genius. The referee just gave you a penalty just as you wanted. Then suddenly, Anne's whole body became violently convulsive. Come on, you've achieved your goal. No need to act anymore. I thought Anne was faking it, but then I soon realized the crash just now was real and it had injured her. I quickly put my hand to her mouth so she wouldn't bite her tongue, then shouted loudly for help. Very soon, an ambulance appeared and took Anne to the hospital. The medical staff told me that Anne was very lucky to have received first aid in time, otherwise she could have had dangerous complications. Back to the game, now my team only had 10 members and no team had scored any goal. As the only substitute, the principal allowed me to enter the field. I tried to soothe my worried teammates. Okay girls, forget using tricks. Let's play with our raw strength and the tactics we have trained day and night. And so, we got our spirits up and kept pushing on. In the last minutes, I received a pass from my teammates and yes! 1-0 for my team! The opponent's net went flying as my ball successfully hit it. This time, we had won on our own! After the game, I went to visit Anne. She was getting better and felt extremely grateful that I helped her. Anne promised to tell everyone the truth and receive her punishment.